As soon as you walk into the testing center, the first thing you want to do when you have a hold the calculator is, is do this. Hit shift. Then the nine button. Then the three button. Then the equals button. And then the AC button. And what that does is that configures the calculator. It resets it. So if somebody had it in some weird mode and was doing something with it, maybe statistics, or they had it in scientific notation, or they had it in radian mode, if you go through this process, shift 93 equals AC, you're going to save me a lot of time by, by trying to figure out what's wrong with your calculator. That will fix what's wrong with your calculator. Just like when you shut off your cell phone, it usually fixes what's wrong with your cell phone. This doesn't fix itself when you turn it off. It stays in that same mode that was in the last time you used it, or the last person that used it. So you want to go through that process. Hit shift 93 equals AC and then reset. <clears throat> some of the other really nice buttons on the calculator is the log base button, and it's right under order. The log base box button. You're going to use that a lot. The LN button, the LN button, you're going to use that a lot. Now, if you hit shift LN, that brings up the E. So if you're looking for the E button, that's going to bring up E box. And E box is a good button. Useless button over here that says calc, we don't use that one. But underneath of that, we use this button a lot. The fraction button. Then the negative button. To the right of the fraction button is really important. It's the square root key. Then the X squared key. And in this one you're going to use a ton, is the Xbox button. After the Xbox button is the normal log. The normal log doesn't have that log 10. doesn't have that log box there. Then underneath the Xbox comes our three amigos. Sine, cosine, tangent. Useless button here, and then here it comes. Here it comes, the English button. What do we use the English button for? Anybody remember? I. That one's going to show up a, a, a decent amount. That's the I button. Now, above the English button, between the English button and the square root, I call it the DMS button. It'll have a degree, it'll have a minutes, and it'll have a seconds. You're going to have to use that button once on the test. It's called the DMS button. So if you're not here today, or you don't watch the video when I post it up, and learn how to use that button, you're going to get that one question wrong. And it's just a simple calculator key. You have open parentheses, closed parentheses, and the open parentheses, I'm sorry, the closed parentheses is the red X. And we use that red X whenever we do mode 7. You have to hit alpha, red X. I don't know if you've heard me say that. I said it a couple of times. Then we have the SD button, that standard to decimal, and then the useless button. And then the big old AC on the right, and the delete button. Way down at the bottom, way down at the bottom, there is a times 10 to the X button. Look at that button, look at that button, and you'll notice just to the top of it is the pi symbol. So if you want to go in the radian mode and type in the pi button, you can do that. <coughs> Special modes. Right now, when you do that, you're going to be in a normal computational mode, degree mode. Degree mode, you're going to hit shift, set up, three. Shift. It's actually the menu button, but it's also called the setup. To go in the radian mode, you're going to hit shift, menu, and you know what it is? Shift, I'm sorry, mode. I'm looking at the thing, you're right, shift mode, three, and shift mode. What's the other one? Shift mode four to go in the radian mode. Nothing else on that screen is of any use to you. Complex mode, complex mode, that's to deal with the I or square roots of negative. To get I or to take the square root of a negative, you're just going to hit mode two. That's it. You're going to start banging stuff out in uh, complex mode. To solve an x squared, to solve an x squared, and that's the big one that we always always use. That would be mode five, three. A equals one, b equals negative one, c equals negative one. Your first intercept would be one plus square root of five over two. Your second x sub two would be one minus square root of five over two. Then your x val. Your y vowel, and those two numbers represent your vertex. So there's going to be a couple problems on every test. I always ask you to find the vertex. You can just use mode 5, 3 and go through that process and know which one's which.
That one, mode five four. Type in the coefficients, and then it'll give you x1 equals, x2 equals, and x3 equals. Remember, the linear factors will be the opposite. The linear factors will be the opposite of that. You would put x minus 5, x minus 1, x plus 2, in parentheses. So when you type that in, it should equal, the answer, if you're in degree mode, is 0.27. 419. I would have gotten that wrong on the test because I was in the wrong mode. You want to be in the right mode, that's degrees, isn't it? Yep. You got to be in degree mode. 